Etika from the Etika World Network here. And if you're into Xenoblade Chronicles X like I am right now, there's actually some leaked footage going on on a Twitch page. I'll have that linked in the description so you can go check out the gameplay yourself. I was watching it for the last two days and I stopped because I started getting really spoiled and I just don't want that part of the story to be ruined for me. So it, it took a real fucked up turn. But at this point now, I'm not watching it anymore, but it's more than available for you guys to watch if you want to. However, talking more about Xenoblade Chronicles X and a potential American release date, we have confirmation that it is going to be coming out in 2015 and we were told this plenty of times before but seeing the recent direct of Xenoblade Chronicles X and seeing how it wasn't translated in the slightest for American release it made some people skeptical if it was coming out this year or not well we have confirmation from Iwata apparently that it is I want to give a shout out to Reninja um, hashtag uh, no excuse me not hashtag um, at the handle mechteambb who sent me this article which regards Xenoblade Chronicles X coming out in America and other regions and a confirmed 2015 release so let's see what's going on here and of course will be linked in the description as well too um, so, okay so Xenoblade Chronicles X development details emerge and Iwata ask interview so going into detail on the huge adventure that waits and guys I don't know I mean one thing that I remember a lot of people complain about during the treehouse is that it was boring watching the people talk about the game and play through it. But guys, for some reason, that Twitch stream where I was watching the gameplay actually unfold with all the sounds intact and just seeing the gameplay unhinged, it was insane. And it was, it was it's such an entertaining, it was such an entertaining experience watching that goddamn game in action. My fucking dick got so erect watching that live stream so i will have that link in the description you got to see this for yourselves guys you got to see this for yourselves anyways so the another chronicles x is going to arrive in japan bringing an end to the huge development while well, the wii owners in the west need to wait until later for the years yeah so i mean yeah basically what this is saying is that there's going to be a whole lot of stuff that's anticipated for this game in america because you know from the japanese release we're seeing it's pretty much a ball buster at this point um, in a good way, in a good way. Um, ahead of the interview arrival of the RPG, Nintendo has released a new Water Ask interview which tackles in, in game, shackles the game in some detail. Who snippets such as the fact that there are 11,000 recorded voice lines and side quests that feel around 3,000 times more substantial. Damn! 11,000 recorded voice lines and side quests that feel around 3,000 times more substantial. Well, the whole 3,000 times thing, I mean, that can be argued with. I mean, 3,000 times more substantial, what does that really even mean? I, I mean, it just means that the game is pretty much fucking big, but I mean, there's no way to really measure out that kind of number or figure. Anyways, um, but 11,000 voice recorded clips are definitely something, something that's to be, you know, marveled at. I mean, I'm sure other games like GTA have more than that, but I mean, still, this is pretty big for a goddamn Nintendo title. Taking part were Genki Yokora, um, all these names of these Japanese developers, I'm presuming. First excerpt we picked out. First excerpt we picked out has more of the laughs that we enjoy from this interview. In this case, in relation to online play. So we decided to focus on creating an online RPG where players will be loosely connected, and not feel afraid to play. Uh, he put a lot of effort into the thought of loosely connected aspect, loosely connected online game. That's right. But Kojima San doesn't look like someone that's afraid to connect with strangers. What the hell? Iwata dropping, <laughs> dropping some jokes in them interview. Man, I didn't know Iwata was. <laughs> This news is a comedian. Um, actually, Kojima sound is very sensitive. Yes, I'm actually very sensitive. <laughs> what the hell? Um, okay, let's see here. Um, more seriously though, we were given examples of how 32 players can optionally connect with each other and then kick off four player boss battles. Yeah, the 32 player connection thing always online was kind of interesting to me. Um, Sometimes there are random missions assigned to the 32 players who are connected, such as go defeat 10 bugs and go gather 10 pieces of fruit. And what would players who would want to focus on their own game do if they receive these missions? They can just ignore them. But if they don't participate, they can still see the progress of the mission, like the number of bugs defeated. So even if some players decide to ignore the mission, they can still see other players are defeating bugs. Right, and if the mission is completed, a reward goes out to everyone connected. Oh, okay. So even players that didn't participate in the mission get a reward too? Yes, everyone is rewarded. Well, that's pretty nice. And who laughed? Uh, if the players can play a mission like this, sometimes special mission in the boss battle is activated. This is the only time where up to four players can actually connect and keep the mission together. This is where players can actually see people that are connected for the first time. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. I get it, I get it. Okay. The mechs in this game called Dolls in Japan and Scales in the West were discussed at length too. 
It was highlighted that it's tough to pick up your first scale due to their expense. Yeah, that's one thing that I saw through the um, live stream on Twitch. That the scales, just to acquire one, is massively expensive. You're going to be paying out your ass. And then you have to pay for fuel to keep that bitch running. So, yeah, it's, it's something that you're not going to be able to do right away. And it's not something that you're going to be able to shit out all the time, you know? Especially if your scale gets damaged. And there's insurance policies, apparently, too. Ins it's crazy. Um, or discussed that link, too. It was highlighted, it's tough to pick up your first scale due to their expense. So you have to earn the luxury. In this section, we're told more about the insurance system. Okay, well, here we go. Um, and back up to try and avoid using free insurance repairs. So, we created scale insurance. Even if your scale is destroyed, it'll be fixed for free up to three times. Nice. Wow, that sounds pretty realistic. <laughs> However, the insurance won't be valid after it breaks the four times. So, you'll have to pay an expensive fee to get it fixed. I honestly wanted the scales to be broken for good once they were destroyed. So, once it's destroyed, it's gone for good. You want the players to take care of the scale as if it was their car in real life? Yes, but staff voiced their opinion that it's too harsh to make players buy a new one when it breaks. Yeah, that's kind of fucked up. I mean, you know, real life stuff, yeah, I understand that. You know, it would kind of make you really value your scale. But it, at that point, it would just be kind of a, a... It would be more of a burden than a luxury to have a scale. Because now, all that hard work and progress that you could have spent customizing that thing is all gone. You know, and it looks like, and there's a lot of customization in that fucking game, dude. So, like, I'm telling you from watching that live stream, the customization in that game is out the ass. So, spending all that money only to have it gone for good if it breaks three times? I'm sorry, man. That, that would become a burden at that point. Like, I wouldn't even bother customizing them anymore if they break constantly. Or I would be extremely careful and never use the damn thing. Sorry about the sounds in the back, man. I, I know a lot of people are complaining about that, but, um, anyways, they... Okay, from there, scale insurance idea was created. There's also an insurance on insurance system. So this system is that if you push the button at the right time to abort, when the scale's HP becomes zero and is destroyed, the scale will be fixed without having to use insurance. So that's why it's an insurance on insurance. So if you push the button at the right time to abort, when the scale's HP becomes zero and is destroyed, the scale will be fixed without having to use insurance. God damn, man. I know it's New York City, but shit. <laughs> um... All right, so insurance on insurance. That kind of sounds like Titanfall in a way. Um, yes. You know, it's funny. A lot of games sound like Titanfall right now. Uh, let's see here. So, well, Vlasan is our staff and the lead battle designer, and he's a very kind man, unlike me. <laughs> Damn, Kojima. Yo. But then again, that's not him. It's, um, it's uh, Makoto. Shimamoto-san. In our staff is the lead battle designer, and he's a very kind man. Yeah, Kojima's fucked up. Um, I strictly told him to just let the scale break when it was destroyed, but he added the insurance on insurance function without my consent. Wow, really? I'm not a skilled player, so for someone like him, is worthy of worship. Worship? Oh, worship, excuse me, oh, sorry. I, I, I saw that as two words, worship. Um, just remember that this feature came solely from his kindness. Sure, well, I'm glad that that does exist. I mean, it seems kinda, I don't know, the timing must be really precise in order to save the scale before it totally destroys itself if it does get fucked up in battle. So I'm glad that feature does exist though in case, you know, something may be going on. Imagine if you're in a big ass fight that's happening, you know, and your scale gets defeated, but you know, you're still trying to get some last minute hits in, but if you don't come out of the suit in time, you do lose the scale and you have to pay insurance, or rather your insurance does kick in. But sometimes I guess you won't be in that prime position to leave the scale at the right time to avoid paying insurance, or not paying insurance, but using your insurance, you know? I know a lot of people won't want to use their insurance, but if you're in the middle of a fucking, of a fucking treasure trove of enemies, then you ain't gonna be leaving that scale when its HP is totally depleted. It looks like the scale will be able to move and still act, even when it's fully defeated, but you just have a timer on how much time is left until the thing just totally fucks up. So if you leave at the right time, you'll be good. But it's hard to leave at the right time when you got niggas up your asshole. And I'm, when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, monsters you're fighting. Uh, anyways, um, since the game's coming out in Japan, it'll be released in America well after everything about the game has been revealed to the public. Ah! Exactly. Damn it, Iwata. That raises the hurdle. But on the flip side, if everyone who plays the game in Japan talks about how much they enjoyed the game world and how their experiences were different from one another, that would be something great for the Western audience to hear. People outside Japan hear a lot of positive news about the game. I feel like we can throw an answer to the question of what the future holds for JRPGs. It will be this game. This is the answer to that question in the form of video game. And Takashi agrees. I mean, I, I, I'm saying, I'm understanding exactly what um, Iwata is saying here, you know? Like, it's just... 
I mean, I just feel like it's such a bad thing that the game's going to be fully revealed to everybody before it gets here in America. I mean, I don't know, that might negatively affect sales in some way, but not if the game is good. If the game is good, then nothing should be negatively affected at all. But I just feel bad because I want to enjoy the game as a pure, wholesome, first-time experience, and I won't be able to unless I'm trying to do everything I can to avoid spoilers and whatnot. But let's be real here. If there's something that's really mind-bending about this game, or something that's like really eye-opening and amazing, people are going to be talking about it without any fucking delay when it comes out in Japan. Kotaku's going to make articles on it. It's going to be everywhere if there's something massive to this game that hasn't even been announced yet that's going to be announced soon. I mean, I'm, sure, I'm hoping that these websites that report all this crazy stuff, all these crazy spoilers that'll happen when the game's released in Japan, do so with consideration to people that want to have a wholesome experience when they play through it the first time. Um, let's see. So, as of this interview, the game is yet to be released in Japan and we're still tricking, trickling our promotional videos. But we have already had people overseas talking positively about the title. This is because, as Takashi described earlier, he put so much energy in the game virtually. It came a crystallization of everyone's blood and tears. He was overseas no, so I think they'll be excited for the day they'll be able to roam the vast fields to the heart's content and fly a scale high in the sky to see the world from above. Um, right. Finally come this far, overcoming many obstacles. I'm sure, like me, that you all can't wait to see the customers' reactions once they start playing. Yeah, we're really excited. Everyone, thank you for all your hard work over such a long period of time. Um, guys, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Go to that live stream that I linked in the description and watch some of this game footage for yourself. Take in the music, take in the ambiance, the environments, the fields of, you know, just like they suggested, the fields of open, you know, grass and everything. Just, just uh, explore. Well, no, thing, and you can't really explore it, but I mean, watch the guy explore it. You're going to see for yourself that this game is really, it, it's different. It comes with something special to offer, especially when you're rolling around the scale and whatnot. Guys, go and watch the stream, go and check it out. I'm sure it's not active right now because it's a Japanese guy doing it, but you gotta see this thing for yourself, man. Um, just watching the footage over the last two days, this game is probably my most anticipated title of this year. And I guess it was, I guess a lot of you knew about it, but I feel like this game is still, even though a lot of people are seeing it in a positive way here in America, I feel like it's still not getting the hype it deserves. But then again, I guess that's the case with a lot of games nowadays. But still, this game needs to have a lot more focus put on it, because this, I feel like it's doing a lot for the JRPG world. Games like this in Final Fantasy XV, fucking classics. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.